Hey guys, my name is Keiko Ogawa and I am Vonis's internal secretary. And currently I'm resident MC for all of our uh, workshops thus far. So if you guys are gonna or have been watching the past workshops or will watch future workshops, you'll hear my voice often. Um, and I just hope that everyone has a good time here with us. Um, I welcome you guys to our workshop, which is pre-production uh, guide to writing a director's treatment. And before we start, I want to give you guys just a couple of reminders. So one is that we are going to have a Q&A portion. So after um, our speaker uh, or our speakers discuss um, their part, we can have a chance to interact with them, ask them our questions. Um, no, no wrong questions, really. And second, if you guys ever get disconnected, just re-click the link that was sent to you in your email and I will admit you in the room once I see you as a participant. Um, so yeah, uh, welcome guys. I hope you have a great time. Actually, before we start, I'm interested if uh, anyone here is a budding director or anyone wants to become a director. If you're too shy to talk, you can always just send it um, in the chat and I can read your reply. All right, so we have one that says, yes, who else uh, is a budding director, or wants to become a director? Okay, so someone says, just interested in the topic, but don't want to become a director. So maybe um, if you're too shy to send anything in and you would just like to ask questions later on, that's fine as well. So if any of you um, are part of the creative industry or are interested in the creative industry, or maybe you're just, you know, bored and you have a hobby of, um, watching a lot of movies or taking pictures, something creative and you want to um, widen your horizons, widen your knowledge. I hope that uh, you're able to learn something new here. Maybe this sparks your um, big interest in what directing really is. All right, so I think we can go ahead with the discussion now. I'll hand you guys over to our speakers. Okay, thank you, Kaiko. Um, can you see my screen or uh, can you check, please, if uh, you see my screen already? Yes. Okay, perfect. So let's start. Uh, so I'm Theo, freelance commercial director. And today we're going to talk about the treatment and the process in doing so. And for um, what we need a treatment and um, what the treatment is. So our workshop is divided into two parts. So the first part, we will talk about the overview. Um, we will talk especially um, in our case here about commercial treatments in general. And we have divided it into client versus agency. And um, we will talk most of the time today only about treatments for agencies and then we're going to talk about the workflow how it usually goes and then the treatment structure and after i'm done with the treatment structure um, oliver will give you some tips and tricks about how to write your treatment in a better way in the second part we're gonna go more in depth so i guess everyone who has already a little bit knowledge is more interested in the second part because there i'm gonna give you all the pools and every workflow is needed to basically um, prepare your treatment and to make it as soon uh, as fast as possible um, yeah good looking basically so we go there in depth and i give you practical uh, tips and tricks on how to work on the treatment so let's start with the biggest question for what and why do we need a treatment so if someone would tell me um, years ago that my work as a director 
um, writing more treatment than actually shooting, I would probably not become a director, but that's the reality. So in my case, as a director, I spent more time in writing treatments and talking with agencies and clients than the actual shoot uh, itself. The shoot consists only a little of my time. And it's really about pitching and pitching because um, in, in, in the world of commercial, you write a treatment, but you don't win every job. And um, that's something we have to understand. And if someone would ask me, is treatment writing fun? Uh, my answer is still no, it's not fun. Uh, and I still don't, to be honest, don't really enjoy writing treatments, but I understand totally why it's a must. And actually it's also a time saver because when you write a treatment and you work not just for you and yourself, um, but you work uh, with a team, um, you notice that this treatment actually helps you in a lot of ways. So that means when you write treatment, you don't have to explain it over and over again. You just have your treatment, it's prepared, so you give it to your team members, especially if your team is growing and growing, and you are working with multiple people, so agencies, clients, marketing department, um, but also your internal film production team. A treatment is helpful there because you have written it once down um, and everyone basically finds all the answers in there. So they don't have to ask you, like, how does it look like? How are the actors looking like? Um, where do we shoot? It's everything in there. That's why um, that's the purpose of the treatment to basically um, make, it under make your vision understandable for all and everyone. So we have to understand here um, the main difference between a treatment directly for a client and a treatment for an agency makes basically a huge difference. So of course, uh, there are other treatments. Uh, you can write treatments not only for commercials, but basically for everything. Um, not, uh, even for non-relatable film things, you can write a treatment. But you have to understand that if you write a treatment for a client, um, most of the time your focus there is a little bit different than from the agency if you write it for an agency. If you write it for a client, um, he wants to hear maybe the idea and just want to have a broad idea on how it looks like and then you can go into the detail. But if you write for an agency, most of the time the agency itself they develop the idea already. So that means if there is a client, they go to an agency and the agency is developing the idea. Um, that's really crucial to understand here because we as director or treatment writers, we are not writing any idea. The idea is coming from the agency and we write a director's interpretation. So we can call it treatment or director's interpretation, um, however we call it. That's something we really, or someone who is new in that business or wants to become a film director um, uh, has to understand that, that the idea is coming from the agency side um, and we as director, we write down our vision. So in that case, um, there is, let's say, an idea coming from the agency. They develop that idea together with the client and they're going to then reach out to film production. And what they do is they're not reaching out only to one film production, but to several film production. And each film production is basically bidding with a director. So every director writes down his or her vision. And let's have a look on how the process is going usually. So let's say um, there is a product and that's coming from the agency side and it's about a phone. Um, the agency is already writing all those information, giving us already the story, like, okay, this is the story. They develop already a storyboard and they basically write down all the details in here like um, 
how does the shot look like how does the pack shot look like and so on and so on and sometimes even uh, more details on how it feels how it looks like um what are um how did they imagine it so it, i mean if we watch this here um uh, it's basically yeah um it's basically uh, as you see already quite detailed and um uh rich of information but then there are also treatments for example that was for a german um client here um there are also treatments which are just one page, um, a client brief, sorry, a client brief which are only just one page and then we have to develop it together with the agency. So you see there are several ways in which how we get briefed. Um, so it can be that some of the agencies have really a detailed uh, presentation and some just have one page where they write down the idea. And we as directors, have now to write a treatment. And I have here a treatment guideline, which all of you can have if you like. Uh, we can send it as PDF to you. Um, just hit uh, Kaiko a message, or I guess she will post it later on in the forum. So you can download it there. So it basically helps you to understand and it's basically guiding you um, if you like to write a treatment. Again, this is more for commercial, but you can use it also if you want to basically write down your feature film or your short film um, because in most of the cases um, it's kind of like similar uh, the approach so yeah why do we still need a treatment that's like the big question here so if there is the script the idea already from the agency uh, you have now to understand that we as a director we have to make this idea um, basically um, become reality so they have the idea and we have to turn it into a basically into a film and therefore um, uh, we have this director's interpretation that basically means we have to interpret uh, we have to understand the vision of the agency and we have to write it down now a storyboard maybe um, has already a lot of details, but it's never going in too deep into those details. So let me explain something. So imagine um, there is a storyboard and it says like, okay, one human is going and crossing um, the street and something will happen. So that's what the information we got. And now we have basically, uh, we have to extract that inf information and think about what is um, basically happening between the crossing so maybe one director is writing that a fast car is coming and he's jumping into the air um, and doing a salto or whatever and the other one is uh, saying like uh, the uh, guy is crossing the road but then uh, he sees two dogs and those two dogs help him out in his problem and so on and so on so there are always like even if you see the storyboard there are always tweaks and um uh, suggestions you can give to the, those agency people and they only want to see if you understand the vision of them and if you even can tweak their vision and make it a little bit better or improve it there are no right there are no wrong um ways into doing it because everyone is basically um doing it in a different way so some are just writing keywords other are writing like hundreds of pages oh no maybe that maybe not hundred but a lot of pages um so again there is no key um on how to do it right but this is like a guideline and i divided it into several parts here so um the intro basically is um the introduction in how we see the brand, what's the key message? And um, they here we can write down that we understand the brand and we understand the agency about the deeper message so um, that they understand that we understand them because you have to understand um, that there are several layers. So we have marketing people from the brand, we have, but also several people working on the agency 
agency side and everyone wants to be sure that we understand the vision of them. So we go on to the intention, like what's the purpose and why we want to shoot those movie, uh, why we want to shoot this commercial and why um, and what m makes it special. So it's basically um, um, giving a little bit insight, but not about the story itself, but more um, basically on the bigger side of the pictures. And then we can write uh, and develop the story. How do we see it? Then we write down the look and feel because um, a lot of the um, boards, let's say I receive, don't have any kind of look and feel, maybe just a sentence. I want to, uh, I want to um, have it elegant maybe, but then we can improve it and write down um, about the colors, about the mood, how does it feel like, um, maybe some example pictures already, or example um, uh, work from other um, projects out there. And then about the style, editing, casting, location, and then a conclusion. I will not go into the detail, you can read it later on on your own if you like, or you can ask me later a specific question. But basically, um, here is the guideline on how you write a treatment. And let's show you, I will show you here now some examples. So this is like an example one. Um, I can't show the first pages because it's more about the client, um, but that's usually how it looks like. So um, we have here an example, a little introduction and some picture like, okay, the intro, um and this about the story and then um how is the mood how does it feel like um uh, which direction would i like to take it uh so we um talk about those things i'm gonna write down something about the look and the feel how does it feel like how does it look like and um yeah, the style and the camera movement, the sound, the editing. So you see, I'm really going in depth um, of the vision I have for this film. And then about the cast, sometimes about the location. So it depends also a little bit on what the client wants. So that was one example. Here's another one. Uh, so story. Um, so you see like it can uh be a re it can be really long times to write down like all the details in there uh, about each and everything um, cast and so on so um yeah uh, those are basically uh the 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 um uh, the overview in terms of um the treatment itself it's a lot of informations but we split this core here today into two parts so um, again my um, uh, my talk is to give you a broader uh, point of view on how and why we're gonna use those treatments and Oliver who's taking on as next speaker uh, is teaching you um, practical methods on how you can write it basically and how you can improve your writing in terms of treatment, but also in general, you, and um, he's gonna teach you and give you insights of some tools, not the designing tools, because that will be part two, and how we gonna um, write those things, that will be part two, but for now, um, before I give it to Oliver, do anyone have a question, or um, um, is there something you want to know um, before I give it to Oliver? No questions or Kaiko art questions in the chat? Um, no questions in the chat yet. Maybe some of you are still formulating if you guys have any questions. Um, Taya, will you be here for Oliver's part as well? Yes, I'm, I, I will be here. So if questions are coming, um, I mean, you can also write them down now and I'm gonna answer them later. So I'm done for my part and um let's have a talk or a, um, a small conversation after oliver's part 
So I would just give it to Oliver now and he can take over. Hi everyone. Um, so uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So uh, my name is Oliver. I've been bonus as a um, content writer for a while now. I also do some copywriting and some social media management. So um, like Theo said, uh, a director's treatment is one of the most important uh, steps in film production. So um, that's usually most of um, where I allot my time for. So um, when Theo has a prospect for a project or for a client, um, we usually talk over video conferencing and then he tells me what he's aiming for or what his visions are. And then um, my job is to put details into that vision, make sure that that vision is put into text. So um, mm -hmm. I do a lot of writing and I, I use some tools that um, I will be sharing for, with you later. And you could use it not only for writing director's treatment, but for other uh, written tasks as, as well. So um, I'm going to share my screen now. So here, um, once again, I'm going into the depth of the writing itself. So um, a director's treatment, um, just in addition to what Theo said, is a sales tool that we present to the client in order to um, tell them what we have for their vision or what, we, um, what, what we're going to show. So um, I've developed a few things, uh, key points that I usually look out for whenever I write a director's treatment for Theo. So uh, the first one is, of course, to be organized, articulate, and clear. So even if this is, leans more towards a business perspective, it's very important that you're organizing whatever you write. And um, you're not only communicating your um, vision to the client, you're also communicating this with the crew that will be um, doing the work for you. So make sure that it's articulate and um, here, um, these are the these are the main um, headings that I write for Theo this for the director's uh, treatment. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, Oliver. Yeah. Are you sharing your sh screen already? Because I can't see it. Um, yeah, I'm sharing my screen now. Everyone seeing the screen? No. Okay, one second. Um, let me just check. Uh, are you seeing any screen? Kaiko, can you maybe um, share his, let him give him permission? I don't know how I can turn off the screen here. Can you see my screen now? Ah, no, no, no. Or no, not anymore, but I saw it for a second. This one? Yes, okay. Okay. You can see it now? Yes, there you go. Okay. So um, again, we organize articulate in here. So these are the um, main header headings I write for uh, the director's treatment. So um, so we, I separate my text in under these headings. So just to make sure that uh, what I'm writing is still within the parameter. So because sometimes I get so lost in what I do, like in the storyline, I already uh, included a bit of the look and feel. So um, it's important to write under headings. So um, there's this tool that I use for whenever I write anything. So it's called Notion. Um, let me share um, what it looks like. So this is the main interface for Notion. It's like um, a big notebook that's um, cloud-based. So as long as you have internet, um, you would be able to access this. So it's very useful because um, you could have like just quick notes or like a task list of what you're going to do, what you're going to write. And then um, it's very easy because once you're done, uh, you could just drag it to whatever status it is. There's also a journal. And, and this is what I use more often. It's uh, the simple notebook. So yeah, uh, it's, it has some features that uh, I find very useful. Like, um, for example, this one, I had to um, change the name of the client. 
So um, you know the struggle of every written output is that it's always under revision. So the good thing about this one is you don't have to save it as a file. You share it as a link. So you can copy the link here. You could allow people to edit or add comments or duplicate it as a template. Then just share it as a link. So whenever I'm done with the treatment, I just copy this link. I send it to Theo. He leaves comments. And then um, I just do changes on the same file on the same page. And I also get updated whenever he leaves comments on like this one. So um, it's a very useful and powerful tool uh, whenever you have any uh, write-ups. So again, that's Notion. And then the next one is align your vision. So um, there are clients who already know what they want to happen or what they want to see in a film commercial. And there are clients who don't. So um, whoever that client is, it's important that you align your vision with them, with your director, and with yourself. So um, like I've said earlier, whenever Theo has uh, something up, like a project, we always talk thoroughly. I mean, like, it can be like for an hour because we just have to calibrate and check if we're on the same page just to uh, avoid any confusion or um, just to make sure that we're sending the right message. So yeah, so align your vision. The next one is to employ bold and powerful language. So um, again, a director's treatment is a presentation and a sales team to get this pitch. It's not um, certain that you will get that project. So make sure that you the words you use are powerful enough to convince your readers. So there are two tools that I use for this, and I hope you can use them too in your future write-ups. The first one is Word Hippo, and the second one is Grammar. So Word Hippo is just a website that I use. So here, if you type Word Hippo here, it's very straightforward. It says, what's another word for? For example, I'm looking for an alternative for the word catch. So when I type in catch and I press find it, it shows me an array of results for synonyms of the word catch. So I can use capture, seize, and snare, anything else. And this is important. Why? Because um, their clients are not always the same. There are clients that uh, require a specific level of sophistication, like five-star hotels or um, Michelin-star restaurants. They require words that are um, what they call it that are very elegant, very sophisticated. So it's important to have a, um, a set of words that you can choose from to know that um, you're in level with them, you're at par with the quality that they're looking for. And another tool that I talked about earlier is called Grammarly. It's actually just a Chrome extension, if you can see here. I've added it as an extension in Chrome. Uh, right now I'm using the beta version, but there's a premium one. Um, it's also very helpful because even though you are very confident in the language that you're using or um, the, uh, your grammar, you could have uh, blind spots like for this one um, to act sensibly. Grammarly high automatically highlights the text for you so that you can edit it. It follows like Oxford comma um, and other grammar stuff. So right off the bat, you can see here that um, there's a mistake here, styling-wise. Um, if you're, if you missed it, if you happen to miss it out, um, and you have Grammarly on your Chrome extension, it will highlight it for you, and it will suggest the changes that um, you need to do. So you should add and hide them to that. So it, uh, if you're going for the premium version, it also uh, provides alternatives for the type of tone, uh, things like that. So yeah, uh, you could check it out. Um, it helps me a lot, not only writing director's treatment, but also when I do um, copywriting or uh, when I write blogs. Yeah. Okay, so... There with this slide. So um, this is also uh, something that you have to watch out for. This is a red flag for most clients. So you should avoid writing overly descriptive paragraphs. I mean, um, I learned this a long time ago. Um, slides are usually not that um, attractive to people or to readers if they're more than seven lines per slide. So um, 
director's treatments, by the way, are meant to be just a summary or, or outline of the work that has to be shot. So if you're a busy client, um, would you spare time to read like a 20-page long script over a 10-page treatment? So um, usually you'd go for the shorter one, right? So rule of thumb, even in even with regards to other types of um, writing outputs, less is more. So it's important to highlight the parts and key points. And then usually director's treatments have pictures. So um, let this picture say something for you. And the text that you will be including there, it will only be a guide or a preview. So the next one is, of course, pretty basic, avoid jargons. So again, um, when you're writing something, especially a director's treatment, make sure to put your feet into the shoes of your client and your crew. So um, you have to think, would the client understand this? Or would the crew understand this? And while so many flamboyant words are good, make sure that the level of wording that you use are still within understanding of a lay person. So um, again, you could use um, word hippo, like I showed you earlier, to adjust the uh, level of sophistication of the words that you're using. And you could also use Grammarly. If you're going for the premium version, it would suggest if your text is too long, too wordy, or not super understandable. So yeah. And the next one is leave some room for modifications. Well, um, even if you are so stubborn with your visions, you know what you're going for, you know what you want, you know what you want, you need to leave room for changes because um, practically clients will always have something in mind that are not aligned with your goals. You can send them an output by the end of the day and they'll be sending you like triple revisions of things to do, things to add, things to reduce. So it's important to have a framework but make it flexible enough to be modified to better fit the client's needs. Then um, just the last tip that I have to make your um, writing better. Um, as I mentioned earlier, writing director's treatment is not always fun, especially if you spend long hours just sitting on a desk, coming up with creative juice, coming up with creative ideas when you don't have any more creative juices to, uh, to give. Um, it's important to love what you do and just have fun. Actually, if you have that vision, if that vision is coming for you, coming from you, it's important that you write it yourself. Because why? When you're writing along the way, you get to develop more things. You get to learn more strategies in terms of writing the director's treatment, and you can also apply it to your next project or, or your next bit. So uh, that's it. That's all I have to share. I hope you learned a lot from my talk. If ever you have questions, I'm now um, giving the floor to Kaiko. Thank you. Thank you so much to Theo and to Oliver for teaching us and sharing um, their knowledge. If you guys have any questions, comments, um, you can just unmute and ask or type in the chat. Really, there's no um, wrong questions here. Our workshops are for anyone who's interested in whatever um, we're providing or whatever we're willing to teach. Um, so actually, if no one has a question yet, I have a question myself. Um, so now I understand what um, kind of, like one part of what being a director is. And so that is writing a director's treatment and it's supposed to be for um, the advertising agency or the client. Um, I know that you guys are a two-man team when it comes to creating um, director's treatment. But what I want to ask is, uh, what's the standard um, kind of process uh, or team, um, I don't know, workflow for when you're writing a director's treatment? Is it really just doable with a two-man team? Um, in bigger uh, production, is it like a whole team, a, a big thing? Like, what is the... Um, what is uh, the space that this certain um, thing occupies? Oh, wait, can you hear me? Hello? 
Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you guys hear Theo? Yes. yes. Ah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, so usually, I mean, it's not that you can't write it with uh, more than yourself. Uh, of course, um, uh, the most of the treatments I've written, um, I've written it alone without any other people. Um, um, but sometimes, you know, um, it's also, uh, especially if the treatments have a tight deadline and you're writing for multiple projects, it's also um, hard uh, to do it all on your own. Um, so on, in, 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 I think in the most cases, people are, as I said, like I've written also my treatments all alone before. And in the most cases, everyone or the most people are writing it alone. Um, unless, um, of course, there are like directors out there who have their ghost writers and also people who design for, for them and doing basically the whole treatment. Um, that they basically outsource it to someone else. So even the pictures, the design, the moods, everything um, is outsourced. So there are no right, there is no wrong, um, because at the end, it's your vision as a director. So that's that's that should be clear that um, it don't matter um, like with who you are working. Um, you have to understand you as a director, um, you are basically like a brand on its own. So um, you can do everything on your own or you uh, can get help with a with other people. So in my case, because I'm pretty um, slow in terms of writing, I just um, um, I, I just uh, find it helpful to have someone who is better in writing um, and faster, so I can focus on other things. Um, and that's the answer. So there is no right, there is no wrong, and there is no right amount of the people. But again, most of the treatments I've written alone, um, yeah, I hope I could answer the question. All right, uh, thank you, Theo, for answering my question. Um, anyone else has any uh, questions or comments? Not even questions, it can be queries, like just something small that you wanna know. Doesn't really need to be a, uh, a big, long question, uh, like what, I just said it can be something simple. Just in just in addition to Theo's answer earlier, it's really important to have like more people, like I mean, two of us working together writing a director's treatment because most of the time you don't notice that you have oversights, especially in terms of writing. So it's important to make sure that um, your that someone else is also checking your work, just to um, make sure that you're on the same page. Yeah. So uh, again, um, maybe something I have to add: every treatment looks actually quite different. Um, I have also written treatments which are just one page uh, long or treatments without any kind of picture so sometimes let's say um, uh, you you write for a documentary or let's say um, a feature film or a short film your treatment is a little bit different um, but you have to understand for what the treatment is in first place is it for a client is it for an agency or is it um, to for your team um, once you understand for what and why you use the treatment, it becomes also clear because then you don't write it just for you and yourself, but also um, for other people. And actually, most of the time, it's not just for you because let's say you have your vision in your mind, but if it's just in your mind, then um, no one else don't know what you are basically talking about. And it's so much easier if you can show them references if you write it down um so so it, that's basically the time you can um take it send it to someone and then don't have to explain it over and over again only if someone has then a deeper and uh want to know more about a specific 
thing in the treatment itself, then you can go over the questions. But um, if you understand like, okay, the treatment, uh, why do I have to write the introduction? Um, why um, do I have to write the story part? So for me, for example, also one of the most important things in the treatment itself, and that's actually something I would always do, it don't matter what kind of treatment, it's basically like a little summary of the story. Because sometimes we tend to write something like directly in your face uh, and we start directly with the story, but for someone um, who never heard of your story, it's always hard to dig deep and to understand what you're talking about and especially if it's like a long treatment and no one has the time to read all the stuff um so write a little summary so it's everything else becomes also easier to understand um so once you understand like what your writing is all about uh then you have context in everything you put um along uh in your treatment so it's not just like um something without a context which you have to figure out uh, on your own but if you write a little summary at first like a little introduction what the story is about or like the whole thing is about it really helps to understand not only the bigger vision but also the bigger perspective of the story itself yeah any questions any more questions Hi yeah, guys, if you have, if you guys have any more questions, really, like there's no uh, wrong <laughs> questions in, in every workshop. I've asked questions myself because I'm also uh, really, you know, curious and interested. Like, what else can I learn? What else have they not maybe touched base on or talked about that I was expecting, maybe, or maybe. Um, something that I thought they were gonna talk about. We actually have two uh, new participants um, who were late. Uh, they only joined in um, these past few minutes of the second part. Um, so shout out to Renato and Martin. If you guys have any questions, um, I mean, even though the workshop is kind of um, over already, we started at 5.30. Uh, 530, 535. Um, you can um, re-watch this uh, later on for those who were late. We're going to post it in the forum. So don't feel bad if you missed uh, the first part. We're going to post it and you can watch it there. Okay, we have one uh, question from Lens. He asks, have you experienced clients who would prefer a treatment with visual images in it? Is it as effective as the usual treatment that you have shown us earlier? Um, so I think there is no right and there is no wrong because every client and every agency is really different. And that's something you have to find out like, um, again, it's not like I found the secret sauce and um, I'm able to win every project. Uh, again, it depends also like for which country am I pitching, for which agency, how does they want it. And um, you can ask soft questions in, 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 and try to find out like, is that what they want? Um, some clients don't like suggestions. Um, so they really just want you to execute their idea. And everything you put inside could basically kick you out of the job so they don't want any additional ideas but some others they love more and more and more ideas they want your input so that's that depends really but what i've shown here so those examples they consist both writing so this for example the example one i showed uh, i don't know if you can see the screen can you see the screen yeah, okay. So that was the first example I was uh, uh, showing. And again, it's like written words, like here, blah, blah, blah. And then some pictures. So it's like the, um, um, yeah, we have text and word here. Uh, and also reference uh, m for music and video. And it's the same, basically, how most of 
the time I'm working. Again, I have here um, the guideline which Kaiko can post in the forum as well. So here you can read exactly um, why those um, sections and um, parts are important. Why is the intro important, the intention, the story, look and feel, style, editing, music, sound, casting, location. Why, why are we writing about those stuff and why are they important? Uh, not all the time, but in, in, in most, of the uh, most of the time they are. And yeah, so that's the answer. All right, thank you, Lens, for um, sending in the question. If anyone else has more questions, um, we actually have a comment from Charlotte. She says, not a question, but just wanted to thank you as these kind of workshop workshops are helpful to us as Calm Arts students. Kudos. Thank you also, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and also for those guys watching, um, and if you guys who are watching now don't know, we actually um, issue participant certificates uh, for participating and attending in the workshops. If you guys are interested in that, you can uh, actually find um, a little guide on how to get a certificate on the Vanas X forum. Um, but also I'll give you guys a short summary here. So, um, so that you know. So basically after every um, workshop, we post it onto the forum. We also post the video there. We upload everything um, to YouTube actually. So if you wanna check out the others as well, you could check that out. But how to get a certificate is that you look for the workshop forum um, of the workshop that you attended in uh, on Vonus X on the website. And uh, once you get to the forum post of the workshop you attended, you basically just leave um, a comment uh, of what you have learned or an example um, that you applied what you have learned and followed by um, just a written request that you would like a certificate. And then um, our internal staff and our speaker will review um, if uh, you are eligible to receive a certificate. And if you are, then we'll send it to you directly uh, with the email that you use to sign up. So in case you guys were wondering. Um, so I actually have a question, but I think maybe if Theo and Oliver, maybe you guys have a question to Charlotte. She is a Calm Arts student. Uh, no. What no, do you mean? No we have a question. Like maybe um, what she expected to learn, why she's here, how she found us, something like that. I mean, if she likes, she can tell it. <laughs> 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 Up to her. Okay, well, I want to know actually, Charlotte, how did you um, find our, um, found, find this workshop or on the website? Um, actually, I've applied with bonus back then. Uh, I can't remember what year it was that. And then I uh, kind of re uh, received an email uh, regarding this workshop, so I'm just uh, kind of curious for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much, Charlotte, for uh, answering. <laughs> for okay, so... If uh, no one has a question, I just wanted to mention that this is actually a two-part workshop. Uh, today we have talked a lot, a lot about theory and um, a lot of things uh, which maybe just go inside your ear and um, goes out of the other side. But next week, um, there is the part where we really dig deep and um, where we talk about the workflow and how you can write in the shortest amount of time a treatment. Uh, so I'm gonna teach you um, my workflow. What tools are uh, um, am I using? Where did I get the images? Um, um, Oliver mentioned Notion already, like that's, that's really useful in terms of writing. But next week I'm gonna show you which tool I'm using for designing. Uh, it's um, Publisher Affinity, um, but 
sometimes I use also Keynote, but you can of course use every kind of um, tool. It's same, same, but different. Uh, but I'm gonna show you why I really like uh, Publisher because it allows you to work a little bit faster if you have prepared templates. Um, and especially if you work with images, it's a lot faster than working with PowerPoint or Keynote. Yeah, and um, and then you can basically do your own treatments. And it will be actually nice if you join next week and also kind of like upload a little treatment or if you play around with it um, to see just what you have learned. That would be actually quite nice to see. Yeah, guys, so that part two will be on the... Um on a Tuesday next week, I believe. Um, actually, I'm double checking right now. Yeah, so on the 18th, um, if you guys are interested, you can um, sign up for it as well so you can receive notifications and stuff um, in case you would like to attend that one as well. Cool. So I think we're then finished, right? Yes. I mean, if uh, anyone else has any questions, uh, if none, nah, then we're basically done. Um, but if you guys have, you know, like a follow up question or you realize later on you wanted to ask something or maybe you're too shy right now, um, you can just uh, go to our forum later on and uh, ask your question um on the forum post directly there and they will answer it they and oliver will answer your questions okay. awesome guys so, yeah thank awesome you. okay <laughs> hello thank you thanks a lot for thank everyone you. who's joining and hope to see you next week thank you guys yes. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, Hopefully, thank you. see you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Thank you so much.